Welcome back. My next guest is Nestor Aparicio, always doing great things here at Baltimore Positive. Nestor, you know, I'm a big football fanatic and uh, baseball isn't my strong point. But now we've seen some accolades for the uh, Baltimore Orioles. Uh, we got a rookie of the year. We got executive of the year. We got manager of the year. So they won all the awards except the, the World Series. But you also uh, uh, brought to my attention a, a story about the uh, the Oakland A's moving. So I want to hear more about that from you. Well, I mean, I'm I'm into the stadium thing. I'm having Tom Kelso on again this weekend. Um, you know, the Ravens don't play for 10 days and then they play one game and they don't play for two weeks. So it's really we're going into an interesting time here where this deadline here is at the end of the year. And it's because there's a deadline because they had a two year lease. They signed a two year extension. So that that expires at midnight New Year's Eve. Right. So we're up on six weeks here. Um I don't want to say the governor's running from me, but he's not running toward me. Um, so, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. We, e e even if he's standing still, right? It's still, uh, it's not the same as running towards you. You're standing still, you're losing ground. And I've talked to some folks around town. They're convinced that the Orioles have been sold. It's just a matter be before they announce it. I haven't seen anything. I don't know if you've heard anything, but that would be great news for for uh, the Baltimore That's nothing I can report as anything that I know to be factual yep. or even rumorama or that that John would ever let the thing go. But ultimately, it's his mother's team. Um, but they're on the same team. I think it has so much more value after they hoodwinked the government. I think John's been so entrenched with Wes Moore to get another 300 million, whatever he can get away with, 400 million, whatever he can get away with, right? And that's what I've been reporting on. But the backdrop of this, Dennis, is great because when uh, Thursday morning before the Ravens-Bengals game, word dropped that the MLB owners have unanimously voted to allow the A's to go to, to Las Vegas. Now, ah, that's a shame. I've been, yeah, I've been doing this a long time, right? So, I, I mean, I go back to the early 90s when we were the rich team and we had Camden Yards and Camden Yards was new and you were, you were going to take your – uh, your girl out to a, a banquet there and a, and a evening of dancing there. And it was going to be the best steakhouse in the city. And you were going to look out over the field and you were going to have weddings there. Like, all, I, I don't know what happened to all of that. And that's I've talked to the Maryland Stadium Authority about Boog's Barbecue being sold 365 days a year, like chaps where you would just go down there and have lunch and have the kids run around the field and um, feel good about the organization. You know, just in a general live, work, play, all of that stuff that John talks about here. And I mean, Dennis, I'm taking a way deeper dive into this. There's a parody clause. Anything that's given to John must be given to Steve. The whole thing begins with they did a study and they said, how much will the stadia cost to maintain over the next 15 to 30 years on a sliding scale? You know about all this. I mean, your company sits on land and trying to, you know, evaluate where we're going with our business and what we're going to need to make toilets flush in a 40, 50, 60 year old stadium doing repairs, all of those things. They came to the grand conclusion it was one point two billion dollars of bonds set off by lottery tickets. Right. Um, and. They went to the legislature. They pushed it through without having any debate. There was no civic debate about it. It was on Hogan's watch, Republican administration in a Democratic state, in a city that's been forgotten sort of by that part of the government to give $1.2 million. And from my understanding of this is when Tom Kelso went into Larry Hogan and said, we're going to need $1.2 billion. Hogan, who's a Republican, looks and says, how much? Mm -hmm. Like the whole – both the stadiums only cost $500 million when we did this 30 years ago. We're going to earmark for billionaires so they can make more money. And this is just to make the toilets flush, right? Like this isn't – we're not building anything. We're not building structures. There's a parking lot there. You know, eminent domains coming down the line. I, I've been warned by everybody about that, that these houses you see behind, you know, and the houses in front and 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 where they keep the money, which is the reserve building, all that is in play. As well as Bramble's thing at the harbor, which I spent an hour talking about this week on the Crab Cake Tour down at Fadley. So all of this is intertwined for the future of the city. I can't, there's nothing more Baltimore positive to me. Come at the football team, beating the Bengals, losing to the Bengals, how they're going to play against the Chargers. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Lamar bringing another championship. That's great. The Orioles winning three uh, worlds. That's great. But what does it mean for the community? And I went down there this summer and I saw how depressed the baseball franchise is as a franchise. I mean, the night they clinched, there's 25,000 people there. <laughs> I mean, tickets are eight bucks and, and nobody wants to go. Blame it on crime. Blame it on Fox 45. Well, whatever you want to blame pricing. I mean, how much more can they charge? I mean, when they can't get what they can get, right? The Ravens. Giving tickets away, Bengals are in town, it's less than face value, right? Like it was the same. It, it's never more than face value. Tickets were $22 against the Browns the other day. I was on StubHub. I mean, I yeah, I, I was on SeatGeek. I know what, what, what's going on. I, I sat in those tickets and ate them and had to give them away. And I get yeah. offered them sometimes. So, like, I'm trying to figure out the value of all of this. And then I wake up on Thursday and the Oakland A's are gone. And then I realize the Oakland Raiders are gone. And then I look and see the Golden State Warriors are gone, right? And I and I look in my childhood and say the Baltimore Bullets were gone and the Baltimore Colts were gone. And I can pull my 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 uh, belt buckle out and show that. So, um, by the way, si- can I can I make a joke just for sure. the week? My wife just got back from she's on her way back from Paris. She's not here yet, but she will be uh, by the time you hear this. And she went to the Colts Patriot game, the morning game Sunday morning with Niels, the man who saved her life, and the Colts won. You're going to love this. I said to her, I'm like, you got to witness one more Colts victory this year than I did in 1982. Oh, oh, was that right? I mean, that's come the on. Truth. I thought, that's, that's that is the, the truth. truth. That that's is the, the truth. truth. Who cares about the Colts? But I do care about the people of Oakland. I've never been to Oakland, but haven't lost football. Now you're losing baseball. And I go back to Reggie Jackson. And basketball. Yeah. But they, they can take the, they can take the, the train over and oh, watch their basketball that's, that's team play a, for three times the price, of course. You know, that's insane, though. But I remember Reggie Jackson with the Oakland A's. I mean, to me, it's an iconic franchise. I get they need they want to put a team in Vegas. But why the A's, uh, Nestor? Well, I mean, I could pull up pictures on my Facebook of the last time the Orioles played there and what it looked there like. Nobody, there was nobody there. I mean, it, it, it's just it, it, Dennis, it's just been an unbelievable thing to watch the deterioration of when they quit on it, right? It's like anything else, right? When when you quit on it, you know, that that's when um, it's all over, right? Like the, the community kind of quit on it. The owner kind of quit on the community, the, the owner. And that's where you you really have to think about this. I'm going to pull this up for you then cuz I, I had this out. I, I, uh well you have to give me a permission to share but um but but nonetheless the stadium there is in such disrepair. I was there last year. I mean I was there a year and a half ago and I've been going to that stadium the first time I walked in that stadium was I'm just I'm really trying to think the first time because it might have been the day of the AFC Championship game. I think it was. I think that was the first time I walked in that stadium was the day that we, David Modell and I held up the trophy and we went to the Super Bowl. So it was 23 years ago. I don't think I was there before that. I posted this. I saw the best baseball game I ever saw in my life, in my life. And I saw, I mean, I was at A's Orioles playoff games in 1974 where Catfish threw, you know, it was one nothing game, Palmer. You can go look these games up, Vita Blue, all of that stuff. The game and I, I was there when Labors hit the home run at the launching pad. I was there when Joe Carter hit the walk off in Philly to, to, excuse me, in Toronto to be. I mean, I've seen amazing baseball games. I've been to, I, I was in the locker room when the Braves won, you, you know, in Atlanta. I've seen great, great baseball things. The best baseball game I ever saw was a playoff game between the A's and the Red Sox in Oakland in 2003. My wife flew in. It was game five. It was a clinch game. And it was Barry Zito and Pedro Martinez. And this is 20 years ago, Dennis, right? So it's 2003. In that stadium that they had built Mount Davis, they built all those seats up there. By the way, Ray Bachman and I went to the AFC Championship game there when the Raiders won, when they beat the Titans. They beat Jim Schwartz with Rod Wood the next mm. year, in the, the Rich Gannon year. Then when they got their, their ass kicked by Tampa, right? We were at that championship game. Ray and I were in Mount Davis sitting up top in the Titan seats because Jimmy Schwartz left us the tickets. I wasn't wearing wearing these colors, but I, I was wearing black because you don't get killed there if you don't. But um, So I've been in that stadium a million times. And that day, my wife and I saw that incredible baseball game there in 2003. There were – I literally, Dennis, I was with Julio. And his father was still alive. God bless him. He loved baseball. And we sat on that bridge. I wanted to take the the the, the um, 
subway and they were too good to take the subway. They had to take the car. And I'm like, we're going to sit on the bridge. My wife peed in a cup in the back of, in the back of his car uh, getting there. So we get there and you just pull up and park. It's game five. It's a knockout game. It was like five in the afternoon game. So it was like an eight o'clock East Coast game. I mean, everybody in Boston, it's getting 90 share in Boston, right? The, the Red Sox hadn't won the World Series yet. It was 03. It was the height of Schilling, Martinez. Um, my God. I mean, it was, you know, they were the Red Sox, right? Pull up. The stadium had, I could look the attendance up of the game, but they're lying if they said there were 20,000 people there. Like, they're, they're, they're lying. And my wife and I bought tickets. She wore a Red Sox hat. She's a Red Sox fan. And there were... 4,000 Red Sox fans there that lived in the Bay Area, right? That would just like the Red Sox are playing a knockout game. My wife and I walked up to the box office. I wasn't worried about tickets. I knew we'd get a ticket. I walked up. I said, you know, what do you have? Oh, we have seats. Uh, these are eight rows behind third base. Uh, how much are they? They were like, I swear, 18 bucks or something. Oh. They, they, was, they were like giving the tickets away and they couldn't get anybody to sit in them. And my wife and I went and sat in them, and we saw the best baseball game I've ever seen. It was the game where Johnny Damon got knocked out in the outfield, and, and it was the crotch chop game with Miguel Tejada. It was the last game Tejada played with the A's, and then he became an Oriole right after that. It's a really, really great, great, great baseball game. It was like a three-to-one final or something, but it was just an awesome game, a lot of strategy. We had great seats. So I remember sitting in that stadium, seeing these great baseball games, great football games, championship games. All, it's all over with. It's all over with now. They're going to move the team. And this greases John. This empowers John more to say, you know, that, that there is a chip that if we're not getting what we want in Baltimore, we'll threaten to leave. We'll like of all course. of that. All that MOU was a joke. And the governor knows that and his people know that. And they're doing everything they can do to pacify him the same way that for 30 years people have done things to pacify his father. They got him $600 million, Dennis. You know what I mean? Like, they got exactly what they – they got $600 million, and it's not good enough to get the lease done. Bashadi's already signed, but it, this isn't good enough. And then he's – now he's in on the new Maryland Stadium Authority and on Westmore, whom he wrote chapters for Westmore's book years ago. So there's all of this relationship that I didn't realize existed. And if they agree to do this, if Wes agrees to this and – and 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 um, Brooke Learman and the people and, and and Annapolis in general, all of our elected officials go down there and agree to sort of double the money for what they just gave them a year and a half ago because it's not good enough. Now, Steve's going to get all this money. And there's everything. And I've said this to Bill. Clark, there's everything but a plan <laughs> like show me what you're doing with the money. And worse than that, the, the worst part of this, Dennis is that John is looking to get rid of the oversight. He's looking to get rid of the Maryland Stadium Authority and have all of this money gifted to the Orioles to create their own shell construction companies and potentially <laughs> screw it up. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. So you're well, hearing the exact opposite. If you think John's getting out, I, 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 I've heard nothing to the – I've heard that John's digging in. Well, and that the governor's digging in and that the commissioner has bigger fish to fry. The commissioner spent Thursday morning voting to move the Oakland A's to Las Vegas. And they're trying to get the stadium done down in Tampa. Man, Baltimore's on the back burner. They just won 100 games. Hey, what could go wrong here except that are they selling tickets? Are they selling skyboxes? Are they – are they like what are they doing? And they're – they don't even have a lease. I keep saying they don't have a lease on January 1st. And people – and we're all blinded by the football team, right? Like – Football yeah. teams do well, and even when they're not doing well, we're – but this is important. This is really, really, really important, and I just want people to keep their eye on the ball because this Oakland thing opens the door. They don't move franchises in baseball, man. They have Se a – Second time, I think, this, this century's happened. It's not well, the Nationals, right, yeah. would be the case, but yeah. they didn't know what to do with the Expos. Right. And I go back in the late 90s – talk about great guests I've had on the show that you don't know I've had on the show. I had – the governing body on my show regularly. Jesse Ventura did my show several times in 1999, 2000, I, I, I and 2001. I can see that. I can see that. He was the governor of Minnesota, and they were trying to contract the twins. Yeah. Go Google it. They, they said, we're going to get rid of these two franchises, and the, the governor of Minnesota lost his mind. Of who's course a wrestler, he would. by the way. But he lost his mind. 
And he came on with me very soberly, like, you know, who he can be when the wrestling shtick, it was the governor's shtick. And he came on with me many times and said, we're not letting the, we're not letting major league. It's pretty good. We're not letting major league baseball take our franchise from Minnesota. Now we've, got a long history with the the Homer Hankey. We're going back to Tony Oliva. We're going back to to Burt Blylevin. We're going back to the Rod Carew, the roots of baseball here in Minnesota. So is that pretty good? Is that good? good. Just like the good. But you know, there's got to be massive pressure on the governor, though, not to allow franchise to move uh, on his watch. Whether you're Westmore, the Orioles or aren't Jeff leaving. Ventura. That that's the thing that's fake here, right? There's no yeah. leverage. They're not going to leave Baltimore. No one is in on John Angelos. No one in Major League Baseball is going to have his back to move the franchise when there's six hundred million dollars sitting on the table, um, and Camden Yard, and a stadium that's built and ready to go, and a government that's ready to run it, and he's trying to overthrow the government's oversight of all of it. And abscond the parking lot, and once he absconds the parking lot in the warehouse, and he owns it all, and it's his to do whatever he wants, sure. what are they going to give Bashadi that's equal value? Right. The the other side I mean, of the He's stadium. asking for things I don't know that the government can even give him. You know what I mean? Like, maybe, well, maybe he wants to open up a bunch of steakhouses, restaurants, et cetera. Who knows? Who knows? But this was the big lie from the beginning because he inherited all of that. His father inherited a franchise with no Washington – no television network, 3.6 million fans, Cal Ripken, Brooks, Boog, my cousin, Frank. Just go go through the list of what they had. They had Alomar. They had Key. They had Wells. They had Erickson. They had, like, they had Palmero, even though nobody wanted him. Who the hell would want him? But um, I, I, I would say that this franchise, in the future for the franchise and where they are and they're winning games, they're not even marketing. You, you mean the, the marketing is look at our manager of the year, look at our executive yeah, of the year, look at our money. rookie of the year. But like, have are you? But that's not their mo. They they, they haven't marketed. Buying tickets? Are are they doing a winter carnival? <laughs> they can't sell tickets to games because they don't have a stadium to play in. No. Meanwhile, every concert's putting their thing on sale for November of next year, trying to get you to buy two tickets to Green Day to make your kid happy for Christmas and spend two hundred dollars <laughs> too much. You know, like the concert industry's out in front of all this, trying to make holiday gifts and Black oh, Friday gifts, and sure. like you know, Black Friday, Live Nation will have buy four get two free for Ario Speedwagon and and Lover Boy or whatever's going on, and the baseball team's not selling tickets. Like I, I don't. They've never run the business right. Like, I mean, I have Marty Conway on all the time. We talk about the unorthodox way that their tickets aren't on sale. They don't have a lease. The owner disappears. He's in Nashville. He's fighting with the governor. The governor's doing anything he can do to appease him, including some really crazy stuff, like busting up the Maryland Stadium Authority and giving John more money and land that he would then have to promise to Steve, and there's nowhere to park. Like, (laughs) what? The legislature went down. And blindly got you $1.2 billion, yep. and that's not good enough. I mean, it's insane, Dennis. I don't know what else to say. Hey, and go yeah. Ravens. There you yeah. go. As for the sun, you might get the moon. Nestor, appreciate you you coming on, your insight in regards to these matters that uh, people uh, are looking to sweep under the rug. So thank you for brushing them and bringing them to the surface. Can I say one more thing, just to, sure. on a baseball side? Um, Getty Lee, you're familiar with Getty Lee, you know, from Rush. Uh, I'm seeing him this weekend. So there will be a report on your show, my show, our show, all next week. We got crazy week next week. It's Thanksgiving, right? I mean, yes, you know, absolutely. Uh, you know, up on it. I'm, I'm doing the Crab Cake Tour Pappas on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be at Coco's on the 29th. I'm at the BMA on the 30th at, at Gertrude's with Dan Rogers. I'm so looking forward to that. We're up at Hollywood Casino on the 1st. Hollywood Casino on the 1st, Tom Kelso, the former Maryland Stadium Authority chairman, is going to sit with me and attempt to, through an index, like we're going to sit and do this as a thing. I'm going to okay, plan good. out like a real term paper to say this is this is MSA for dummies. This is the Orioles and the Ravens lease and the future of downtown Baltimore and these stadium and these franchises. And we're going to go soup to nuts to try to educate people. Because my thing was, if you heard my thing was back and forth. And then we're going to do a little piece here this week, just brushing up on what Westmore, what that thing was back in September, the MOU. Okay. We're going to talk specifically about that. So I'm I'm getting into all this, but Getty Lee is auctioning his baseball collection and he's touring and he's written a book oh, about nice. his parents his parents met in auschwitz in a concentration camp 
Wow, that's a story. And escape death, and he is a, a product of that, and it's taken him his whole life. I knew that because I mean, there's some songs that refer to that in Red Sector Eight and things like that. But he's he's doing this tour, and um, it's just it's been a week into it, and I'm really into it because I, right, you know, it, it's the intersection of baseball and Rush. It's great, you know. Well, thank you for sharing. My brother's a big Rush fan. With that, we'll take a next break here, 15:70 a.m. WNST. We'll be back right after this.